Look, I know the Spurs aren't in the playoffs right now, but I have to react to the stupidest NBA opinion I have heard in a while, which is saying something. And I sit there and I look at Popovich today. And first of all, he was arrogant and stubborn on threes. He didn't want to play the math game. I mean, the Dramar DeRozan trade is is a bad trade. I mean, it's the a end. Terrible trade. It's a terrible move. I mean, DeRozan. Since when you he was look USC, at what other people yeah. got for their stars, to get Demar to to trade Kawhi and Danny Green, and you get DeRozan, Jakob Pertl, and a bad pick. That's a terrible trade. Terrible Flatly trade. Terrible. Whew. Okay, million things to react to there, and we will take it in chunks. First, this is a classic example of the national media with a hot take on something they don't pay close attention to. And I respect the hell out of Colin Cowherd. He is my biggest inspiration in talking sports. I also respect Nick Wright because he is super smart. But these guys cover football primarily. They don't focus on basketball because that's not what pays the bills for them. Coward especially just does a football show. If you listen to his show, that's what he loves and he pays close attention to football, talks it all year. Basketball is like a one or two month sport for him. He usually only talks about it during the playoffs. And even then it's almost always just about LeBron. So let's take their points one by one and explain how wrong and stupid they are. And I sit there and I look at Popovich today and first of all, he was arrogant and stubborn on threes. He didn't want to play the math game. Okay, so he's right that the Spurs are not great at threes. It's true. The stats say that they're bottom four in three-point attempts the last four years. But the reason is they don't have great three-point shooters. And we'll get to the DeMar DeRozan trade in a little bit. But Cowherd forgets Davis Bertans. Actually, he didn't forget him because I guarantee Cowherd doesn't even know who Bertans is. But he's a dude that the Spurs drafted, and he is one of the best pure shooters in the NBA. Two off-seasons ago, they traded Bertans because Mark Marcus Morris committed to the Spurs. Morris also shot the three with a more well-rounded game, so they wanted him, especially for the playoffs. So the Spurs dealt Bertans to the Wizards to open cap space, and Marcus Morris went back on his word and signed with the Knicks instead. The Spurs got screwed. Also, there's Bren Forbes, who the Spurs drafted and developed. He's been amazing for the Bucks. But all Cowherd pays attention to is LeBron James. So let's let LeBron explain how arrogant Pop is when it comes to adapting the game. I got to be able to do what he's done in an era of basketball where it's changed so much and he's been able to have a growth mindset and be able to change with the game. You know, it went from a league where it was like inside, outside. Like every time you bring the ball down, throw it to the big. You know, and then it goes to like every time down, pick and roll. And then it goes to like every time down, shoot a three. <laughs> and he's, <laughs> Pop has been able to adjust every single time and still, for some odd reason, keep those guys under the radar. I don't understand that. <laughs> <laughs> and that comes from someone who pays attention to the game every day. Pop is not too arrogant to change. He literally changed every single era of basketball and he won chips the whole time. National media will just look at a stat like this Spurs being bad at three point attempts thing, give a hot take without knowing the whole story. So here's a stat about the most efficient shot in the game, the corner three. Quote, more than a decade ago, Greg Popovich discovered the most valuable 21 inches on an NBA basketball court and nothing has been the same since. The Spurs ranked at or near the top of corner threes every season for 15 years. That's because Pop is always looking for an edge, not too arrogant. And at the time, he had the players to execute. Pop isn't going to blindly follow a trend. Often, he's creating that trend for other coaches to follow. I mean, the DeMar DeRozan trade is, is a bad trade. I mean, it's the a end. Terrible trade. It's a terrible move. I mean, DeRozan. Since when you he was look USC, at what other people yeah. got for their stars, to get Demar to, to trade Kawhi and Danny Green, and you get DeRozan, Jakob Pertl, and a bad pick. That's a terrible trade. Terrible Flatly trade. Terrible. And it was arrogant. And again, Cowherd is trying to paint Pop as some arrogant guy who thinks he's too smart for everyone else. I don't understand why you have to attack someone's character to get your point across sometimes in the national media. But even worse, he's wrong about the Kawhi trade. Yes, Kawhi was a finals MVP who should have gotten a bigger haul, but his health really hurt his trade value. After getting hurt by Zaza Pachulia in the 2017 playoffs, Kawhi only played nine games all next year. 
On top of that, it was a mystery how bad this injury actually was or what was even wrong. That is a huge red flag, like what hurt Victor Oladipo's trade value. Also, Kawhi had demanded a trade to LA and that kills a player's trade value because other teams don't want to risk giving up a ton for a guy who's not going to re-sign. The Raptors made a good bet because they won the title, but yeah, he didn't re-sign. Teams were hearing that and they were right. Nick Wright compared the trade to other star trades recently. What he means is Anthony Davis for Lonzo Ball, Brandon Ingram, Josh Hart, three first round picks and a swap. The Nets, James Harden, but they gave up Jared Allen, Karis LeVert, Torian Prince, Radians Karouks, three first plus four swaps. The Clippers got Paul George for Danilo Gallinari, Shea Gilgis Alexander, five first and two swaps. And yes, Nick Wright is correct. On the surface, that looks like the Spurs should have gotten way more, but this is all after the Anthony Davis trade set the market. After that, we saw the insane Paul George trade, so the Rockets then were comfortable asking for so much for James Harden. The world was just different when the Spurs traded Kawhi. In 2012, the Lakers gave up Andrew Bynum, out of the league two years later, a first and a second for prime Dwight Howard. That same year, James Harden went to Houston for Kevin Martin, Jeremy Lamb, two firsts and two seconds. In 2017, the Cavs traded Kyrie Irving to the Celtics for injured Isaiah Thomas, Ante Zizic, Jay Crowder, and one first round pick. This was the environment the Spurs were trading in. And to compare that to the current environment is either intentionally wrong to call Pop arrogant or just plain stupid because you don't actually follow NBA basketball. But the last statement by these guys was the worst and the stupidest one. Uh, uh, Popovich, similarly, you start believing in the system over the player, you kind of buy into what everybody's told you, you're a genius. Popovich is in that same spot. They're not relevant. They're not relevant. Well, so to sum up, the downfall of the Patriots and the Spurs is a head coach thinking he's a genius and becoming arrogant. Now, I'm not going to comment on Bill Belichick because I'm just a casual football fan, but the exact opposite is true about Coach Pop. Cowherd says he, Pop, believes in system over player. That's just false. He is a player first coach. Listen to what Pop said when Tim Duncan retired. People who grew up with me know me. Uh, I would not be standing here if it wasn't for Tim Duncan. You know, I'd be in the Bud League, the Budweiser League, uh, someplace in America, uh, fat and still trying to play basketball or coach basketball. Uh, but he's why I'm standing here. He's made livings for hundreds of us staff and coaches over the years. Pop admits his coaching is not the reason for the Spurs' success. He literally says, if it wasn't for my star player, I would be in the beer league, fat and trying to still play or coach. I do know that Belichick is hesitant to compliment Tom Brady. That is a part of why they aren't still together, but he is the opposite of Greg Popovich. He might be rough at times, but he is a really humble and kind dude. I know that firsthand from working in San Antonio, and I guess that's why I had to make this reaction video, because even when I was being ripped by Pop, I saw other parts of him behind the camera that were kind and humble. So when some national media guy calls him arrogant because they don't actually know NBA basketball, this had to be said.